Isn't it great to be alive on this beautiful, crisp Sabbath morning? Boy, the air smells so good. Feels good when you get out there in it. We're glad you're here, especially all these folks from Georgia Cumberland Academy. We're so happy that you're with us today. And one of, one of that group will be our preacher today, Ainsley. And so we're looking forward to, forward to hearing a word from the Lord from her. And uh, Jeff had our Sabbath school lesson. It was a very good, very good Sabbath school lesson on Nehemiah. So we're glad you're here. Uh, other than GCA, well, if you're from GCA or if you're a visitor with us today, would you please raise your hand? See how many we've got. Man, half the congregation is visiting today. It's wonderful. We're so happy to have you. Many of you have participated in Operation Christmas Child in previous years uh, where we made gift-filled shoe boxes. And these boxes are sent to needy children who live in over 100 countries around the world. If you'd like to participate in Operation Christmas Child this year, you can use an ordinary shoe box from home or you can purchase a plastic shoe box at the dollar store or Walmart or Target, wherever we can wherever find one. And uh, please see the bulletin insert on how to repair that shoe box. And if you would like to make a shoe box, please raise your hand and one of our deacons will give you a special envelope. Kind of looks like this, all right? This that special envelope. On it, you'll find two labels, one for a boy, one for a girl. Please determine whether you're making your box for a boy or a girl and the age of the child that the box is made up for, okay? And then please cut out one of these labels and mark it and tape the label on the top of your shoebox. And want to thank everybody who, who engages in this and gives shoeboxes for the kids. And you need to return your gift-filled shoebox within two Sabbaths. November 16th is the deadline, two weeks from today. We're not giving you much time to shop, but we expect that uh, you, can, you can do it, all right? So raise your hand if you need an envelope, and one of the deacons will give you ones, okay? Thank you very much. And I see Wayne Woods is here today. Brother Wayne, it's good to see you. We're glad you're here. And Tim, could you come forward at this time? Tim agreed to help us out with our song service this morning. Life is no fun if you can't put other people under the bus with you. So Charles is going to join us. Oh, I, was, I saw Charles <laughs> marching up, and I thought, good, good, good. Well, there's no more so, appropriate person to throw under a bus considering the amount of miles I've spent on greyhounds. Oh, yeah? <laughs> You've done a few? Now, the man's from Canada. You have to understand that he would travel back and forth. Oh, the Timses are here. Are you visiting or are you members? <laughs> huh? Good to have you. Amen. All right. So our first song this morning is one that you're familiar with. The earth, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. This is our Father's world, isn't it? Amen. Let's sing together. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings, and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my Father's world, I rest me in the of rocks and trees, of skies and seas, his hand the wonders wrought. This is my Father's world, oh let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems oft so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world. The battle is not done. Jesus, who died 
it shall be satisfied and earth and heaven be one. Well, looks like those didn't match. What we were we thought we were supposed to sing first and last, but that was first and second, it looked like. Or is it first and second and third? Anyway, it's okay. For ye know not, ye are, you are of more value than the sparrow, right? Amen. Yeah. This is a song that you're going to love. I don't know about tomorrow. Mo many of you know this. So let's sing together. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine, for its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry o'er the future, for I know what Jesus said. And today I'll walk beside him, for he knows what is ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my hand. I don't know about tomorrow. It may bring me poverty. But the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who stands by me and the path that is my portion may be through the flame or flood but his presence goes before me and i'm covered with his blood Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Let's stand together and sing about our Redeemer. I will sing of my Redeemer. <clears throat> I will sing of my Redeemer and His wondrous love to me. On the cruel cross He suffered from the curse to set me free. Sing, O oh, sing of my Redeemer, with His blood He purchased me. On the cross He sealed my pardon, paid the debt and set me free. I will tell the wondrous story How my lost estate to save In His boundless love and mercy From the ransom freely gave Sing, O oh, sing of my Redeemer with his blood he purchased me. On the cross he sealed my pardon, paid the debt and made me free. 
I will praise my dear Redeemer. His triumphant power I'll tell. How the victory given over sin and death and hell. Sing, oh, sing of my Redeemer. With his blood he purchased me. On the cross he sealed my pardon. Paid the debt and made me free. I will sing of my Redeemer and his heavenly love to me. He from death to life hath brought me, Son of God with him to be. Sing, O oh, sing of my Redeemer, with his blood he purchased me. On the cross he sealed my pardon, paid the debt and made me free. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Almighty God, it is so good to come into a house of worship today and to celebrate together as family and friends our Redeemer. Oh God, as we worship you, as you fill this place with your sweet, sweet spirit, we just pray that you would breathe upon us words of life. And whether we're here for the first time or whether we attend this church on a regular basis, I pray that we would leave this place knowing that we have been touched by the King of kings and Lord of lords today. And may you receive all the praise and all the glory because we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's time for the children's story. And as, as, as is their habit, they would uh, come to you and receive any offerings that you might have for their basket. Oh, there's one. I'm right at it. Now that's good. <clears throat> and our organist and our pianist will play through this once, and then we'd like for you to join us and sing through it one time. Yes, bring those kids right up here. And who, are you giving the children's story? Good. What is your name? Abigail will be giving the children's story this morning, and we can hardly wait. <clears throat> All right. Join with, join with me. Let them come. Let them come. Let the children come to me. I have time. I have time said the Savior tenderly. Let them come, let them come. Please don't send them away. I have time, let them come, let them stay. Hold on. Thank you, Rodney. Appreciate that. Thank you. Well, hello. Welcome. Abigail. boys and girls. How are you today? Are you good? Yeah? 
Well, my name is Abigail, and I'm a student from DCA, and today I'm here to tell you a story about my two dogs. Now, do any of you have dogs? Yeah, you have a dog? Yes? Do you all love dogs? Yes? Okay. Well, today I'm going to tell you a story about my two dogs, Rex and Mozzie. So one day, a long time ago, um, my mom came and told me to go let out the dogs one morning so they could go to the bathroom and stretch their legs. So I was like, okay, mom. And so I went and I let them out to go to the bathroom. And I closed the door and I left them out there for about 10 minutes. And so, and so um, when I came to bring them back in, I called them and I told them to come inside. So I was like, Rex, Mozzie, time to come inside. And they weren't there and they wouldn't come back inside. And I didn't know where they were. So I was like, okay, maybe they need some more time. So I closed the door and I went back inside and waited for another 10 minutes. And then when I opened the door again to call them, they still wouldn't come back. And so at this point, I'm getting a little worried. And so I went and I told my mom, hey, the dogs won't come back. And so when I told her that, she went outside and she started calling for them, but they still wouldn't come back and we couldn't see them anywhere. And so she told my brother to go out and look for them and he couldn't find them anywhere. And so a few hours passed and I'm starting to get really, really, really worried because we don't know where they are and we haven't seen them for hours. And so a thought popped into my head and I was like, why don't I pray? So I got on my knees and I asked Jesus to bring my dogs home safe and uh, to protect them wherever they were. So we kept praying and we kept looking for the dogs and we kept calling for them and we still couldn't find them. But at the end of the day, my family and I, we were gathered around the living room and we were like, what do we do now? And then I heard a noise outside and I opened the door and Rex came running in and Mozzie followed him later on. And I was so thankful that God had answered my prayer and had brought my dogs home safe that I just started crying. And I was so thankful for everything that Jesus had done. Jesus works in many ways, and he al he's always there for us when we need him the most and when we're worried about something or someone. He is always there to answer our prayers and is always there for us. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this wonderful day you have given us. Thank you for the sunshine, and thank you for the wonderful weather. Lord, I want to say thank you for always being there for us and for always answering our prayers. And um, please keep us safe today and help it to be a good Sabbath. We love you so much, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. You guys can go back to your seats. Good morning again. Our scripture reading this morning is not from Ephesians. It's from the book of Romans. It's Romans chapter 2. Turn in your Bible. Turn over to Romans, the second chapter. And verse 15. Which shew the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the mean, while accusing or else excusing one another. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word this morning. It's now time for prayer requests. And I think Tim has that duty this morning to bring to us some requests that he knows, some answers to prayer that he knows about that maybe we don't. Well, it's never just me that knows it. It's really Carol that is the prayer knowledge guru. Um, something that's unique to our church, we always have a prayer bowl, and we pray for a lot of different families, and 
our church is kind of known for that. So um, folks that don't even attend our church, make sure they're added to our prayer request chain. We want to um, pray for Pat Butler, who is Joyce Butler's daughter. She passed away earlier this week, and uh, she was enrolled in hospice. And so please pray for her and Letty May Bragg and their family at this time. Miss Laura Cookie um, had a clot, and thankfully, we're very thankful that it didn't cause a stroke or a heart attack, and she's here with us this morning, and we're real grateful for that. Please remember Jan Henderson. Um, she continues to need our prayers. She's been on crutches this week, or this past week, in trouble with her back, and so um, we need to keep holding her up in prayer. Zen was a little dog that got hit, um, crushed by a hit-and-run driver. He's doing very well, and he's almost back at home. And so, um, you know, God takes care of the sparrows. Why wouldn't he take care of a sweet little dog? Um, continued prayer for Irene Umloff. She's 100 years old. Um, we want to continue prayers for Wayne. He's here with us this morning, thanks to Tom. And... Uh, Wayne, I just want to say, is an inspiration to me. I went and walked with him last night, and we did about 2,000 feet on the hallway, and uh, we just want to hold you up in prayer. He goes to UAB for a special constraint therapy where they'll restrain his left, or no, your right side, and force him to use his left side, so we're really hopeful that when he gets done with that, he doesn't have to go back to a facility and that he can be independent. Please pray for our school and the teachers during the issue. We've kind of been displaced. We had sewer back up. We had some problems with the septic and the field lines. And so our students and teachers have been displaced into different areas, and it's not really easy for them to continue teaching as effectively without all their resources. And so please keep praying for them and help us to get the needed repairs and necessary things done so they can get back to their normal classrooms and their normal activities. Um, Chris and Cleveland Wells um, are elderly folks that uh, attend our church and we really miss them being able to be here with us but please continue them for them in prayer. They still have a lot of health challenges. Um, there's a whole bunch of folks that she has listed here at the end. So James uh, Craig he lost his brother. We need to continue praying for him. Jill Brignoni um, is Art's wife, and she's got some health challenges. She's not able to weight bear on one foot, and she's having to go around on one of those little roller things to keep her leg, her foot, from touching the ground. It's very constraining to her. She teaches at AAA, and that's a hard thing for her to continue doing in that shape. Um, Sandy and son, Nathan, Wayne Woods, Henderson's family, uh, Melina Susie, um, Linda Abercrombie, parents, Seth Adams, I'm going to give a little praise. <clears throat> He's my son, and he had a plane fall on him. He was a Marine, and he works as an aircraft um, mechanic, and it crushed him. Thankfully, he lived through it. His head and torso actually went into the wheel well but his legs were out underneath the belly of the plane, and they were crushed. And so it, this has been about two years of three different, well, four or five different surgeries total, but three on the one leg in particular. His right femur has had not real good bone growth, and it was really shattered. And he went to the orthopedist yesterday, and he's had three total surgeries over about two years. And this time he had total bone growth, regeneration around the circumference of the bone, and it's the best he's looked according to the orthopedist in the x-ray. And so he's able to weight bear. He does have to walk with a cane, and he's getting ready to have our first grandchild, um, his wife is actually, uh, November. And so we're excited. They were actually in the ER, and she's dilated to a one, so I will be disappearing here in the near future when that baby starts to really come. Um, also, Bob and Carolyn Woods, they transplanted down to Warner Robins, and they were a huge part of our community and church and part of the founding families, and uh, they've been transplanted, and we really miss them, but they need continued prayers for their health issues, and also the Goldborn family. And I wanted to read a quick little thing on why we pray, the wonders of technology, if I can find it. <laughs> uh, 
And this is from Prayer. It's one of Ellen G. White's little compilations, Chapter 9. And it's titled, The Power of Prayer. Prayer brings increased spiritual strength. Those who seek God in secret, telling the Lord their needs and pleading for help, will not plead in vain. Thy Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. As we make Christ our daily companion, we shall feel that the powers of an unseen world are all around us. And by looking unto Jesus, we will, shall become assimilated to his image. By beholding, we become changed. The character is softened, refined, and ennobled for the heavenly kingdom. The sure result of our interaction and fellowship with our Lord will be to increase piety, purity, and fervor. There will be a growing intelligence in prayer. We are receiving a divine education, and this is illustrated in the life of diligence and zeal. And I think sometimes we get up here and we ask for prayer requests, and if we don't get the result that we think we need, um, we see it as a failure. But God is never a failure, and he knows the end from the beginning. And even though the prayer requests who we're praying for may not get the result we're looking for, he knows the ultimate need of that individual in the big scheme. And I think that was an important quote to kind of keep in the front of our minds. Thank you. Well, it's prayer time now, and I wonder if there are any in the congregation today who have an unspoken request. Just raise your hand if you do. Many. God sees every hand. That's good. And uh, let's sing our prayer song, Seekers of Your Heart, and then we'll kneel for prayer. Lord, we want to know you, live our lives to show you all the love we owe you. We're seekers of your heart. And we know the promise, if we seek, we'll find, right? So we want to kneel together for prayer now, and if you'd like, you can come up to the front here and kneel uh, with me. Otherwise, just kneel right where you are, and we'll pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, it is with humble gratitude that we kneel before you this morning, thanking you for the glory of your presence for the beauty of this Sabbath day, for the treasure of having guests in this house. We thank you for Georgia Cumberland Academy, for all who are involved, for the each and every one of the students, for each administrator and teacher. We pray that you'll continue to bless them in their walk towards you, and may they find you and be blessed and be a blessing wherever they're found. We pray for those who were mentioned by Tim on our prayer list, those who are in need of healing for those who are in need of spiritual healing and physical. We're grateful for the good news and pray that you will continue to watch over each one. Give them courage and strength and assurance. And now we want to ask your blessing, especially on Ainsley, who's going to bring the message to us this morning. We pray that you would... Fill her mind with words from on high that we all might be blessed by her preaching and that we, because of that, would be able to share better the word with others. We thank you for the Spirit's presence in her and in all of us. In Jesus' name, amen.
I think I was probably in about seventh or eighth grade when I pulled a book off the shelf in the library. I still remember the size of it. It was about the size of eight and a half by 11, about that thick. And it was the story about the discovery of King Tut's tomb. I was just, uh, I, mer I still remember seeing a picture of his gold sarcophagus on the cover of that book. It was etched in my mind forever. And he died in Egypt in 1323 B.C. They think he was probably about 17 years old. He was buried with solid gold chariots and thousands of gold artifacts. His gold coffin was found buried within gold tombs within gold tombs. See, the ancient Egyptians believed that in an afterlife, one where they could take earthly treasures with them. But all the treasures intended for King Tut's eternal enjoyment stayed right where they were for more than 3,000 years until Howard Car Carter discovered them, 1922, almost 100 years ago now. Tut's life was tragic because the awful truth was discovered too late. He wasn't going to be taking anything with him. Okay? He couldn't take his treasures. He lost it all. But you and I can send our treasure ahead. We can do this. Through giving to support the work that Christ treasures most, and that's the salvation of not only us, but all those out there. He came, he died to save every single human being who will say yes. And so today, let us return God's tithes and our offerings and send our treasure ahead so we can show Him that we plan to be there, right? That's part of it. Anyway, we can hardly wait to meet Jesus in heaven. We'll wait. Uh, we'll have the deacons wait on us now for the offering, if they would, please. Let's pray. Father, what a blessing to return your tithe and our offerings for the furtherance of the gospel work on earth, for the salvation of souls. Lord, we trust you to see to it that these funds that are returned to you and given in hope will indeed move minds towards God and heaven. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning. Um, my name is Jeff Freeman. I'm the Director of Enrollment Services at Georgia Cumberland Academy. And I have the privilege of working at a school that believes in discipling young people. Um, and I'm looking at a church that I know you believe in Adventist education, and um, you have a lovely school here. I've had the privilege of visiting it a couple times so far, and I know a lot of you have sent your children to GCA. So I know that you are lovers of GCA yourselves, and the theme of GCA is to know and to love and to serve Jesus Christ. Amen. And so uh, this, this morning, the first Sabbath of November, it is GCA's Outreach Sabbath. And our goal is to literally close down the campus and everyone disperses to different churches. So today, um, we have 11 churches that we're in. Uh, some are doing what we're doing, where um, someone's going to be preaching and a special music and a children's story. Uh, others, the band is somewhere, the choir is somewhere. So this group that is here, um, none of us are really a part of any particular group or uh, we volunteered to be here, and so we, we wanted to be here with you and to worship with you. So um, our preacher today is Ansley. She is a senior this year, and um, she has a passion to share Christ, and um, so I'm looking forward to hearing the message that God has put on her heart, and I believe with all my heart that it's going to be a message from God. Amen. And so Ansley, please come and share with us. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. So um, the scripture reading is actually what I've based this off of, but I want to pray first. So bow your heads, please. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Uh, thank you so much for the weather and the fall time coming. Um, thank you for this church. Thank you for uh, having them invite us to come and take over their Sabbath for a little while and just help my words to be yours help me to speak with your intent and not my own in your name i pray amen so a few weeks ago on our last little home leave break some of us went to liberty kentucky for a mission trip and the house that i was assigned to work on was um, owned by a, a lady named miss donna and we were supposed to just do some reconstruction to the roof and some some stuff to the the shower just a, some cleaning up and some reconstruction stuff that she couldn't do on her own Miss Donna was, um, she struggled a lot in her teenage years. She shared with me and one of my best friends about just all the stuff that she had gone through. She was abandoned at 16 and had to raise herself. She was mistreated, and she ended up turning to drugs and alcohol. And she also resented religion. Her parents were really strict with the religion, but also kind of hypocritical. So she very much resented religion. So when, as we were coming in and listening to this, Obviously, we were on two different spectrums because you have all these kids that go to this Adventist school and we're serving this lady who has no interest in religion. So we were, um, we were kind of, we were assigned to do more this construction work. And now some of us, me being one of those people, are not cut out for a lot of construction work. And I had never participated in any construction work before. So I was very scared and I'm um, not going to lie, I was a little grumpy that I had to wake up super early and go work on someone's roof or go work on someone's shower. And I also didn't really think I was going to benefit anything else other than just like fixing maybe some, uh, some parts of her house. I didn't think that we would have any lasting effect on her. And on, but on the second day, by the time we all got warmed up and we all got used to what was going on, we were all kind of happy. We had more of an understanding of what was going on and we all kind of fit in with our jobs. And, but I still didn't, I didn't really feel like we were doing any major work. I was like, we're just working on this lady's house. Um, the last day approached of this trip and um, we were able to kind of take a breath of relief because we were done with all the hard work and we all went out to eat at um, this incredible restaurant and we invited Miss Donna to come with us. And she got up and she talked about how we were showing her a kind of love that she had never seen before and that, and she started crying. She was just talking about how grateful she was for us. And, and it was just, it showed us more of like, this isn't just going and fixing someone's house. You know, we're, we're helping out someone's life. We're helping out them to see who Jesus is through our actions. 
And I wanted to take the scripture reading, Romans 2.15, and kind of break it down using the story of Miss Donna to kind of explain what I feel like it means to me. So the first part says, they show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, their consciences also bearing witness. And to me, this kind of resonates with how we were acting towards Miss Donna. We weren't standing there preaching to her. We weren't opening a Bible and telling her where she should read or what she should do with her life. We were simply just there to serve her and to serve the Lord. We were there to help her. And through that, we were able to show God. And I like how this says like that the law is written on their hearts and, and their consciences will also be bearing witness. So it's not that we're it's, it's not necessarily that you're using your words. You're using what you have in your heart. You're using just everything inside of you to bleed the word of God. And, and they see that. And it's not necessarily you're forcing their religion on, on these people. Instead, you're just showing through everything you do the love of Jesus. And, and in my opinion, that affects people more than preaching sometimes. The people that have have disregarded the church or have had really bad experiences with coming to church or with religion, they don't want to be preached to or read from the Bible. They want to see what being a Christian is. They want to see why we are who we are and what we believe. Um, The second part of this verse says, their thoughts sometimes accusing them and at other times defending them. And to me, this, this relates a lot in life. If we're living for God, even without having to speak a word, that can definitely affect us positively or negatively. Thankfully, in this situation, it was more positive. Our faith and what we were believing was defending our actions. Everything that we did lined up with what we said that we believed. And that really does show people that it's, it's true. We're not hypocrites. We're actually living out the life that we say we're living out. Um, I titled this sermon, Together We Go, because in my mind, for anyone to stick by Jesus or to come to Jesus, we either need someone that is where we want to be in their Christian walk. We need someone to help us and influence us, or we need Jesus Christ himself to be there to help us and influence us. And a story in the Bible that goes along with this is found in John 4, verses 5 through 9, Um, starting in... Verse 5, it says, So he went to a city in Samaria near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat by the well, and then came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me a drink. So we're first starting off, we see Jesus, who is now in Samaria, which Jesus is, like the Jews and the, and the Samaritans do not interact with each other at all. This is not something that they do. They don't go over to each other's land or whatnot, and they especially don't talk to each other. And he just sits down and starts this conversation asking her a favor, and he completely disregards the hatred he's supposed to have for these people. And then it goes on in verse 9 to say, the Samaritan woman said unto him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gifts of God and who you were speaking with now, you would have asked me to give you the living water. So now he's not only just talking to her, he's confronting her, telling her that if she truly knew him, she would know. She would know why this is happening. She would know why he's being nice and she would ask for more. She would want more. And then the next few verses talks about how she's confused, um, about like thinking he means literal living water and not figurative. She's, she's trying to figure this all out and Jesus is helping her out. But my point in sharing this story is that Jesus is telling her right here, like, if you know me, you know why I'm being so kind. And if, if, if people know Jesus, they can see, they're like, oh, they're just, they're Christians. They're, they're from a Christian school. This is why they're doing this. But when people don't know Jesus, they want to know why, why we do nice things, why we're talking in such a kind tone, why we're fixing someone's roof or painting their house purple, which is what we ended up doing for Miss Donna's house. Um, they, they want to know why we do these crazy, absurd things and go out of our way to help these people. And this is what will draw people so much closer to Jesus. Um, in the same way that Jesus was helping this broken and unwanted woman that no one was supposed to talk to of, of the Jews, we helped out Miss Donna, who was a very broken woman who was 
who had turned to substances that aren't always the healthiest, and she had t turned to a lifestyle that obviously we teach against, but yet we were still there. And she knew that we were against some of the stuff she was doing or saying or living through, and yet she, she, I remember she came to me and was like, why are you still, why are you guys, a Christian school, treating a lady like me that has done so much bad in the world, that has turned away from God and is so far away from him? And that just, it struck me, because it's, you have these people that they know Jesus, they know about him, but they don't know him. They don't know that you can't go too far away from him. And they see us going and working for them and showing the love of God and, and representing what Jesus wants us to do. And they just, they crave whatever we have. They crave that happiness and that love. And we are all called to bring one another to Christ. We, we are called to be ambassadors. And it's our job to go out and help other people. And that doesn't mean you don't necessarily have to get up and preach. That's not everyone's, that's not everyone's skill. Some people are better at doing hands-on work, like construction work. Some people are better at dealing with children. Whatever we can do as a church to get out there and help people is, is the best thing. Because in my opinion nowadays, I feel like we just kind of get comfortable. We are at that Laodicea lukewarm church stage. At least I am. <laughs> and I feel like we just get so comfy where we are. We just get so, like, cozied up. And we're like, oh, we have our Christians around us, like, I know that I'm going to heaven. I don't have to worry about other people. Like, they'll figure it out. The missionaries can do that. But in a, in a way, we're all missionaries. We're all sent to, Amen. we don't have to go to Kentucky. We don't have to go across seas. We can, in this church, there are people that are struggling. There's people next to you that have a lot of stuff going on in their life because there's not a single person that doesn't. And I feel like we are here to bring people to Christ. We're here to show them the word. And we're destined to live an eternal life together. That's, that's why we're here to preach to each other because I'm hoping to see all of you in heaven. So obviously, I, if any of you aren't, aren't know, that you don't know how to get there, I want to be the one to help you because we are supposed to go there together. And showing people what's on our hearts is oftentimes way more effective than telling them what's on our hearts. Personally, as a teenager, it's a lot harder when people just tell me what to do. It's easier when they show me or when they do it with me. Amen. And I feel like most of us are like that, but teenagers have that label of, like, not wanting to listen. But if you want someone to listen to what you're saying, if you want someone to do what you want them to do, you do it with them. You walk with them, and you help them out. Amen. There's a, um, a quote that I heard at a... Um, a religious weekend thing that we went to as a school, and they said that we are created by the creator to create. And I feel like that can be applied in so many different aspects of life, but I use that to apply to what I've been talking about today, that we are created by the creator to create something in other people, to plant those seeds and to bring people to heaven. Our, we're created to use our faithful actions to create and plant those seeds and live a life through the love of Jesus. We're not meant to create any negativity in people. We're supposed to take that negativity out of our lives and bring positivity into other people's lives. Amen. And I feel like that kind of goes back to um, the story with Jesus and the woman at the well. It's one of my favorite stories in the world because I, I kind of relate to that woman. When Jesus comes to you and he's like, hey, like, I love you, like, give me what I need, like, come to church. You're like, why me? Like, I've done this, I've done that. You're not supposed to love me. Like, I don't go to church every Saturday or I don't read my Bible every morning. Like, you, whatever it is, like, fill in the blank. Whatever sin you're struggling with, whatever you're struggling with, you don't understand why Jesus would come to you. Like, Miss Donna Moss, exactly what she said to me. She was like, I smoke and I have drank and I have done drugs in my past. I've left, like, everyone that loved me and everyone that everyone that was left had left me. Like she was talking about all these things that she did bad. And she was like, there is no way that I deserve the love of Jesus. And in all honesty, none of us deserve the love of Jesus as harsh as that sounds. We really don't. But he's saying exactly what he's saying to that woman, that if you really knew me, you would know why I'm here. You would know why I'm coming to you and loving you regardless of where you're from or who your friends are or what you do every Saturday. And so the, just that verse again, I just, I just kind of, I want to read it again. Romans 2.15, they show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts. 
their consciences also bearing witness, and their thoughts sometimes accusing them and at other times defending them. So taking that into heart, what you do, what you say, what you think, everything that you're doing can be used to bear witness for Jesus. Your, your heart can be so much in the right place that people just see it. They look at you and they can see it. And there's very few people at that point in their life. I'm not at that point in my life, but I hope that together we can all help each other get to that point where I can just look at someone and be like, they have that love of Jesus. And without them having to tell me, them simply just being there or speaking or or whatever their gift from God is, I can look at them and I see the radiation of just Jesus Christ. And another another thing about Miss Donna, she I remember her telling me that um, she told me why she was smoking. And, and we talked about it because she was smoking in her house a lot. And it was really hard to be in there because we had to keep the door closed so the cats wouldn't run out. So there was just smoke filling up her house. And we were talking about it. She asked if it bothered me. And, of course, I said no because I didn't want to be rude. But um, then she was like, well, I know it's wrong. She was like, but the only reason that I'm still smoking is because this is the one thing that has been consistent in my life. And that, that hit hard. Like, we think of all these things that we do because they're consistent or because they've never let us down. And in reality, if you think about the things that you're doing because they're consistent or not letting you down or letting you down the most, they're taking you the farthest away from God. And that, by the end of, honestly... A small, a small thing that I saw, a small um, detail was by the end of the trip that we were there, she had smoked less and she had gotten out more and talked to us. And she was asking me about Seventh-day Adventism, what we believe, why we go to church on Saturday, things like that. And I feel like just the simple, the simple presence of Jesus can bring you out Amen. of those, those harsh commitments that you have, like whether it be smoking or just like simple things like you know, just little white lies or whatever. Just the presence of Jesus in her life brought her even closer to conquering those things that she was struggling with. Amen. So I just, I wanted to kind of close out with just the thought of the fact that we're here to represent Jesus and no one else. We're not here to represent anybody else. We're not here to represent our, our like I'm here to represent GCA Sort of, but more so the love of Jesus that is on our campus at GCA. Everything that we do is to show Jesus and to show his love for us. So the more that we live out his word and the more that we look towards what he would do, and as our girls dean in the dorm at our school always says, just look at your life and think, would Jesus, if Jesus was standing next to me, would he be doing this or would he be approving of this? And as funny as that sounds, like it's true. We're supposed to be calling other people to Jesus and helping them, but how can we help others if we're not at that point in our lives yet? So find those people that can help you out and then start helping other people out. Start bringing them to Jesus. Start making the influence and the impact that we made on Miss Donna Moss. And even though it was small things, like we fixed her house, which was, which was nice. We painted her house purple and gave her a new roof. But to her, that was the world. She emailed me afterwards and was like, I cannot believe that so many teenagers would put up their free time to fix my house instead of going home and being on their phones because there was no service there and all this stuff. And so that's what we are called to do. We're called to set aside those things we love, those, those things that are keeping us away from God, and show other people that, that's, that our dedication is Jesus. So bow your heads, please. Dear Jesus, thank you so much that I could have a short time with these amazing people in this wonderful church. Please help us to uh, go out and preach your word in any way, not necessarily just by speaking. Help us to live through you completely and 100%. Help our hearts to just pump for you and, and help us to go out the rest of this day and the rest of this year and the rest of our lives just living completely and 100% for you. In your name I pray, amen. Thank you, Ansley. We perceive that God has spoken through you today. Thank you. And GCA, thank you, all of you, for coming.
Let's stand together as we sing the first and last verses, number 626, if you're in your hymnal. Let us sing a song that will cheer us by the way In a little while we're going home For the night will end in the everlasting day In a little while we're going home In a little while, in a little while We shall cross the billows foam we shall meet at last when the stormy winds are past. In a little while we're going home. There's a rest beyond, there's relief from every care. In a little while we're going home. And no tears shall fall in that city bright and fair. In a little while we're going home In a little while, in a little while We shall cross the billows foam We shall meet at last When the stormy winds are past In a little while we're going Rise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. <laughs> 